So, my name is Gabriel Didden here at Iron Eye Gym. I'm the head powerlifting and strength coach here. I'm about three weeks out from the Ghost Clash. Um, I've been at the for 220 uh, powerlifting meet. Give me the 220 class in wrap. I have my heaviest deadlift session this week, so I'm gonna kind of show you guys how I like to do things and take through the entire workout. Let's go. So one of the biggest things I like to do before, I, uh, especially since I'm a sumo puller, one of my favorite warm ups I like to do is Kozak squats. I was also doing some seated good mornings earlier over there with uh, a med ball, but I'm gonna show you guys like the Kozak squats and uh, one thing that a lot of people really mess up whenever they're doing Kozak. So come over here. So nice big open space. So we're kind of like assuming the same sumo position uh, that we would pull whenever we're doing our barbell work. But a lot of times when people do Kozak, when they'll like sit down to the side, they'll rotate their body and their toe will come up and they'll be on their heel here. We don't want to do that whenever we're doing Kozak. We actually want to like replicate the bottom of a squat position, keeping our torso facing this way. That way we sit into the position, we're stretching this adductor and this side is replicating our squat pattern. So we go down here, that foot stays planted, my torso is still facing this way. And we come back up to the top and we're going to replicate the same thing on this side. And you'll notice as I do each rep, I'm able to sink just a little bit lower just because my adductors are actually lengthening and getting stretched out. This is why it's one of my favorite warm-ups before I actually get to pulling sumo. So, I do like 20 reps here or so. Obviously, I'm not going to be pulling sumo in my tennis shoes, so I'm going to switch into these real quick. Uh, Bort Sovki, they're like a company out from Ukraine. Um, I ordered a pair of these from them. Yuri Belkin, he's real popular. He wears these too, and I fucking love them, so I'm going to throw these on real quick. Especially for people who like to pull hook grip. Hand lotion, working hand lotion. This stuff is a lifesaver. If you pull hook grip, your skin likes to tear a lot, get you some of this, apply it daily, multiple times a day, whatever. Take care of your hands. Now, obviously, don't do this right before you're about to like start pulling your heavy sets, but I'll throw this on like in the mornings, and since I'm about to actually start here, I won't actually like get to anything where I have to actually throw in the hook for until I'm like 400 pounds or so. So this will be nice and dry before I actually get there, so the bar won't be slipping around. But now, skin will be nice and loose so it's not going to tear very easily. This is a nice little thing I like to war do for warming up my upper back. We're gonna talk about slack pulling a little later, a big mistake that people make with uh, pulling sumo. So uh, we'll discuss that more later, but that's a real good way to actually warm up your upper back for pulling the slack once we get to the heavier weight. So this is just a nice little stretch I picked up from Chris Bridford. Very tight lower back and a very tight set of hips. So this is just something I tend to do for daily upkeep just because my back gets really tight. So, just the downsides of being slightly bigger than the average human being. The whole slack pulling thing and whatnot. A lot, a big mistake that a lot of people make, especially when it comes to pulling sumo, they will sit into the sumo and then they'll try to hit the pull really hard when they haven't actually preloaded any tension through their back. So this is a really good way to practice it with the, the Boris deadlifts. Um, just for your warm ups, like I'm only going to do it for uh, the first two plates, but basically the idea is. I get in my stance here, I'm already creating tension, torquing my hips into the ground, rooting my feet really hard, and I'm going to 
kind of sit back just a little bit until I can just get my hands on the bar here. From there, I'm keeping my hips in place with that hip tension. And then I'm going to round at my upper back to grab the bar. Once I got my hands on the bar, I'm then gonna extend with my upper back without my hips moving. Again, we're just practicing upper back tension. Once enough weight is on the ground, like it's only two plates, it's gonna float off the ground just with the upper back. But once we have more weight on the ground, the bar will bend. And then I'm in my position to actually pull. five sets, like four to eight reps, depending on. So volume is super low because we're actually so close to the meat, but the intensity is definitely up there. Now, I don't get, uh, I get a chance to pull in the sevens that often, so I look forward to these kind of days because they're a lot of fun. Whenever you get pretty much more than 400, 500 pounds on a deadlift bar, you put it down from the jack, you'll notice when I try to rotate the bar here, it's kind of stuck and it's really stiff because of the plates kind of torquing on the collar, right? All this tension in the bar flex. You go to put it back on, the plate's kind of wedge between the floor and the actual bearing of the bar. So, especially if you pull hook, roll out the bar a little bit before you go to do your pull, and that'll spin real free, real easy. That way it'll settle in your hand a lot better. tripod video your set not just for yourself to review but if you have a coach to send to your coach the best training tool you can probably get is just a fucking tripod to record yourself It's actually my comp max from my last week. 
now it's a warm-up. So it's kind of cool. The plan for today is to do three singles at my opener. That last one was 7.05. Um, I just have uh, 7.27 loaded up now. So I'll probably do the last two singles here at 7.27. Uh, the plan is to open between 7.05 and 7.27. Again, we won't really know until we're at meet day, depending on how uh, fatigued I am from squats. So 7.05 to 7.27 is the range. So we're going to stay here for today. Since I am so close to the meet, uh, since I just did my first single, I'm going to wait about 9 to 10 minutes uh, to actually do my next lift. I'm trying to treat it as close to an actual meet day as I can. Since so you'll have like 10 to 15 lifters in a flight, you'll generally be about 10 to 15 minutes before, uh, between attempts. So I'm just kind of replicating that same setting here in training since I am so close to meet. Just a little bit. I know how bad it's going to get though. We'll see. Does that usually happen? Um, not like right there. <laughs> Normally I'll lose a little bit of skin like right here in the crease of my thumb, but that's a new one. So hopefully it doesn't get too bad. Again, that's kind of like the low end to high end range for what my opener will be. They moved about as smooth as I could ask for, all things considered. Um, basically just did plate jumps all the way up to 705. So for people who aren't familiar with powerlifting, each red is 25 kilograms, which is 55 pounds, not 45 pounds, like standard American plates. So each jump is 110 pounds, six jumps up to 705, and then added the whites, which are five kilos each, which is a 10 kilo jump in total for the last jump. So that's my normal approach whenever it comes to lifting, uh, deadlifting or squatting, is I'll just do plate jumps up until my last increment jump. In this case, it just happened to be adding the whites at the end. So I'm gonna move on to accessories. Uh, I only have those three singles. My thumb survived, which I'm grateful for. Um, we're gonna move on to SSB squat, and then, um, what was it, RDLs? Yeah, RDLs. And then ab wheel for the accessories. So let's do that real quick. All right, since I'm already all warmed up from deadlifts, and now I got SSBs, we're doing a four by four, like at RP, RPE seven each. So the jumps are gonna look very different for this just because it's an accessory movement. I'm just gonna throw two plates on just to start, um, and then we'll go from there. Just kind of base it off my judgment. We'll see. SSVs versus like straight bars. Um, the SSV kind of forces the high bar position. And also, if you kind of look at the camera from the side of it, the weight itself sits lower than where the bar sits on your back. So what this does, when it's sitting on your back, it creates a rotational force, a moment arm that torques on your upper back. So you have to fight the bar to actually stay in position. 
and also it's, since it's higher on your back, it replicates a high bar position other than a low bar position. So real nice accessory for um, your deadlift days because it's not going to beat up your back nearly as much, your lower back nearly as much as like a low bar would. So this is just like for some extra leg work and um, bracing work, upper back work because again from the sumos, we were really emphasizing that upper back extension to lock in place for the pool. This just reinforces that same position. Just because it's a running meme at this point, especially here at Iron Knight, building big quads, since apparently I have big legs. I don't know who says that, but supposedly I have big legs, right? Um, high bar squats or SSB squats would be your best friend when you're trying to actually build up your quads. So my legs aren't particularly big, but so I'm told. This is what people want to know. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> If you do that, you're just gonna get crunched forward really hard. So just simply adding in a little bit of SSB work to your program as an accessory movement will help you learn that pattern. And it's, it's probably my favorite accessory to help actually blow up my competition squat and my deadlifts since I'm a sumo puller. Nothing crazy heavy, this is volume work. Help keep my hamstrings, my posterior chain in shape going into. 
to the meat. So we already pushed deadlifts pretty heavy. Um, that's supposed to be squats just because their squats are pretty heavy. So I'm not going to push these too crazy or anything. I'm also throwing on bursa grips just because I don't like pulling mixed grip ever. Um, if I just throw in the hook right now, it'll just th uh, shred the skin to plug. I don't really have grip issues, so I don't need to practice my hook anymore. So I'm just going to throw these on for the steps. One big mistake a lot of people make with these is they kind of turn into like a lat exercise. So we're trying to do these for bracing, obviously. But the big mistake that a lot of people make is they'll kind of like, they'll lead with their arms going out first. And by the time they get to the bottom of the movement, they don't have any more mobility in their shoulders. So they'll flare their rib cage. And that kind of is hinders the entire point of like practicing a bracing movement, right? When we actually get in position to start the ab wheel, we're gonna lead by taking our pelvis towards the floor but we're still going to maintain that neutral stack position with our pelvis and our ribcage. We're going to maintain this stack position the entire time we go down. So what I was talking about earlier, this is our starting position here. A lot of people will go forward with their arms first. Instead of doing that, what we want to see instead is lead by pushing the pelvis forward towards the ground first and then extend with the arms here, keep the stack position and then come back up. And the way we're cueing the come back up is we're kind of driving our knees into the ground and flexing our core to pull us back up. We're not necessarily pushing and uh, using our lats to come back up with our arms. So starting position here, stand with the hips to the floor, nice brace position, drive the knees back into the ground to come up. And we're just going to do these for a while. I'm in the position where I can do ab wheel rollouts from my knees for like a lot of reps, but I can't really do them from my feet or anything. So to make these a little bit harder, I'll tempo them all the way down, hold position here, and then come back up. That just makes it slightly more challenging, but it isn't as challenging as doing them for my feet. Two by 20, I don't even know what rep right I'm on right now, but I'll go until I can't go no more.
Okay. My entire like hip <laughs> and leg is shaking right now. Jesus. <laughs> so yeah, we'll do another set. It's supposed to be do like 20. I don't really know how many reps that was. I was talking, but <clears throat> yeah, it's ab work. So a lot of reps, and hopefully I'll get better at these. One day I'll be able to do these for my feet. But. All right, guys. So that was just a little look inside of my own deadlift training. About another three more weeks to the Ghost Clash. Hopefully that'll go well. Hopefully you guys enjoyed getting a look inside of my deadlift training and see you on the next one. Trying to speak more